Hey, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day. Welcome to Wheel University. My name is Marlon Kay, and in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know to start selling aftermarket wheels. If you've never sold them before, by the end of this video, you will be an expert. A few things we're gonna go over in this video is why I think you should be selling wheels, how to price point them, how to qualify a customer. I'm gonna show you a free resource to give you a black belt in fitment. So if you don't know anything about bolt patterns, offsets, thread pitches, if all that's a foreign language to you, don't worry, by the end of this video, it's all gonna make perfect sense. And the last thing we went over is just a quick suggestion to help your customers advertise for you to get more customers in the door to help your business succeed and profit. Hang with me, we're getting ready to get into it. Okay, so the first section we're gonna get into is going to be why things should be purchasing wheels, some of the advantages of actually selling wheels at your shop. Before we get into that, let's just get my background out of the way. Like I said in the intro, my name is Marlon K. So growing up as a little kid, one of my favorite movies was Smokey and the Bandit. I love that Pontiac in the movie. And then fast forward just a few more years later, I noticed that Wesley Snipes is driving the exact same car in the movie White Man Can't Jump. It just had different wheels on it. So from then on, I started noticing differences in wheels on cars. I took my first job at a chain store, Discount Tire, it's a national chain store. And then from there, I moved into sales for a major wheel manufacturer. Quick disclaimer, I am employed by a wheel manufacturer, but none of this is going to be any sales pitch. This is all an informational channel. Let's get into why I think you should be selling wheels. The number one reason why I think you should be selling wheels at your location is you get a better customer. When you make somebody's car look better, they feel better. And not just for the day, for as long as they can look at the automobile. And they think of your shop, that means they have a better experience with you. Let's just be honest here. If you sell somebody some Pirelli, some Continentals, a high-end tire, most of the time when they leave, your customer isn't excited about the purchase. And if you're selling a mid-tier tire, your customer's thinking, I have a flat in one of my tires, or I have you know worn tread, uneven wear, I've gotta get an alignment. This is a hassle for your customer. They don't wanna give you the money. They don't wanna make the purchase, but begrudgingly, they have to. They have to get to work, they have to travel, and they have to drive, meaning they have to give you their money. So a net experience for them buying tires is a negative experience most of the time. Let's just be honest with each other. It's just not a positive experience. But with a wheel, you get a positive experience. You get to make somebody's car look better and they're a little bit more happier about handing over money because they feel like they're getting an even exchange. I gave you money, you made my car look better. So that's the number one reason I think you should be selling wheels. Your customer has a better experience. We have happy customers at the shop now. So let's go over the second reason I think you should sell wheels. And that's gonna be number two, which is it's a low barrier of entry. It doesn't take a lot of capital to start selling wheels at all. Pretty much it takes zero dollars to start turning a profit on wheels. As long as you can talk to your customers and you're friendly, you should be able to take what I teach you in the later part of this video and turn that into cash. I have customers that are very, very big in the wheels and they're making about 7,000 bucks a week. And I have certain customers that just do it on the side and they're happy with that. And they're making about 1,500 bucks a week. Say you sell three sets of wheels a week and two of those sets are front wheel drive 17 inch wheels, the most common. I think Hondo Accord or Kia Optima, right? If you sell two sets of those, and let's say you have one set of 20 inch truck wheels that you sell that week. Well, out of those three sets, you should be making around 12 to 1500 bucks profit. That's easy money that you don't have to work very hard for. So the number two reason I think you should sell wheels is, it's the profitability from the wheel sale, money. We have reason number one I think you should sell wheels is you get a better customer. Somebody that feels better about their car or truck is more willing to come back to you. I'll be honest, anybody that's ever sold anything or worked in sales knows it's not about the first time you sell something to the customer. It's about the second, the third, and the fourth, and so on. If somebody has a good experience as your shop, you have what we like to call in the business, a repeat customer, dog. So after that, reason number two is gonna be low capital. It takes none of your own money to start making money from selling wheels, which is awesome. And the reason number three is, you can have your customers advertise for you, and this is important. If you don't have an advertising budget on the books, guess what, you don't need anything in the budget. Your customers will do that for you. So stick around, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to start selling wheels and become a pro by the end of the video.
You've got three really good reasons and why you should probably be selling wheels at your shop, right? So now let's actually get in the meat and potatoes of this and actually start learning how to sell wheels. And the first thing you're gonna need are vendors to call, companies that make wheels that can sell them to your shop. These will be listed in the description below, but three companies that you can start off with that are very reputable are Vision Wheels, Wheel Pros, and Wheel One. Quick disclaimer, I do work for one of these companies, but like I said in the intro, I'm really not here to pitch or sell any of my product. This is all information to help you take sales to the next level and give you more information on wheels and tires. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do after we get set up with these wheel vendors, and it doesn't matter if you set up with one wheel vendor or five wheel vendors or 20 wheel vendors, you're gonna to wanna to do these next few steps for every single one of them. The first thing you wanna do is ask your wheel rep, hey, what are the three most common 17 inch front wheel drive wheels that you sell? and what are their price points. Why 17 inch? Is most cars on the road have 17 inch wheels on them that are front wheel drive. 17 inch front wheel drive, the Kia Optima again, think Honda Accord, Toyota Camry. 17 inch wheels are the most common on cars today. Next thing you wanna ask is the exact same question for 20 inch truck wheels. Why? A lot of trucks come with 20 inch wheels or most people that are taking off 17 inch factory wheels on their truck want to jump up to a 20 inch wheel. They're just common on trucks. Each company that you call, figure out the price point for their 17 inch car wheels and you want to do the exact same thing for 20 inch wheels for your trucks. After you have that process done, you now know the price that your shop will pay for 17 inch wheels and 20 inch wheels, right? And those are the most common sizes. So you already have a leg up on pretty much everybody else around you because I guarantee you most shops don't know the average price of a 17 inch wheel and they don't know the average price of a 20 inch wheel. Just by knowing those two price points, I guarantee you, you'll be able to increase your sales. Now let's take these price points that you have and turn them into dollars, right? Let's turn these price points into sales. How do you do that? That's gonna be the next step. You've called your wheel vendors. Now you know the average price of a 17 inch front wheel drive wheel. And you also know your average price of a 20 inch truck wheel. How do we take that information and turn it into a sale? And that's called qualifying your customer. Actually being able to look at something and say, I think this person might want a set of wheels, right? That's kind of the name of the game, is figuring out who wants them if you've never sold them before. After you've been doing it for about six months, you're pretty much gonna be, yeah, you want wheels and they'll just buy them from you. The easiest way to qualify a customer, I'll be honest with you, is if somebody has a clean car, wheels are clean, inside's clean, they're already at your shop and you can look at the car and tell that it's clean, and they have a 17 inch wheel on there, you can say, hey, I know my average price point of a 17 inch wheel, or if it's a truck that comes in, guy's got 20 inch wheels on there, truck is very clean, it's a 2022 Ram 1500, you have a price point in your head. You're already 75 to 80% better than your competition at this point because you're ready to actually ask for a sale. This is what I used to do to get a lot of wheel sales and it's just the simplest, easiest way to actually get your foot in the door with a customer. Step one, compliment the vehicle. If it's a 2022 Honda Accord that has a little slope back in, say something like, hey, I really like those new Accords, man. In the back, they had kind of that A7 slope in the back. Hey, I really love that new Ram. I like the sharp lines. I'm glad they got away from the bubble front. Whoever owns that car is gonna go, hey, I appreciate that. They're gonna loosen up. Step number two in asking for the sale is simply asking for the sale, but you don't wanna say, can I put wheels in your car or are you interested in wheels? Simply ask, when are you going to let me put wheels in your car? Step one, compliment the car. Step two, when are you going to let me put wheels on the car? This isn't a yes or no question, so your odds of actually getting the outcome that you want are a lot higher because you didn't ask a yes or no question. It's that simple. Clean car. Hey, I love that car. Two, when are you gonna let me put wheels in your car? If they say, hey, not today, it's not a no. If they say, hey, I've gotta to talk to my wife or I've gotta to talk to my partner, eh, we've all heard that before. We're in the automotive business, we know what that means. <laughs> when you ask, when are you gonna let me put wheels in your car, you are now on your customer's side. It's not a sale, it's not a, uh, it's not a grindy situation. They actually will keep that in mind. The next thing your customer is probably gonna ask is how much. Guess what? Every other store is gonna to have to go look in a book, type in a computer, waste somebody's time. 
You're not. You know the average price of a 17 inch wheel. You also know the average price of a 20 inch wheel. So you can fire back and say, yeah, it'll be about 350. 17 inch wheel, yeah, it'll be about 250, right? Your customer's gonna go, really, 250 bucks? Nine times out of 10, people don't buy wheels because they've never been pitched them before. I've worked behind the counter. I've sold a lot of wheels. I see what successful shops do. I'm in them every day. I'm on the phone with them every day. The number one thing successful shops do is they ask for the sale. There's no hidden sauce. There, there's no snake oil. Legit, they just ask for the sale. So asking your customer, when are you gonna let me put wheels in the car? It's a very friendly gesture and it loosens them up a little bit. The next question they're always gonna ask is how much? And if you can fire that price off, guess what? You are now 99% ahead of your competition because you've got your customer to ask how much. Now, if they leave, not a problem. They still have that price point in their head and they're probably gonna come back in a week, two weeks, three weeks. It doesn't matter, but they have the price in the head and that's gonna bring them back to you eventually. Just ask for the sale. That's my big, big, big sales pitch. It's worked for me thousands of times. When are you gonna let me put wheels in your car? That's the trick. Seriously, that's the trick. Get this, your customers are now asking you for price points on wheels just because you asked one question. When are you gonna let me put wheels in your car, right? So now you have your customers engaged with you. There's a back and forth. You're already 95% better than shops around you and I can guarantee you that's a fact. Like I said, I do work in sales for a major wheel manufacturer and a lot of my unsuccessful shops that uh, complain about online pricing or they're just not selling wheels or it's very hard or they don't understand, they never ask for the sale and they get intimidated by it. But by complimenting somebody's car, it takes away that intimidation factor for you, the salesperson. The next thing it's gonna do is make your customer ask you how much the wheels cost, how much are they? And that's what everybody wants to know. The majority of people don't know average price points. They do not. I guarantee you can call any shop that's around you if you're in the wheel entire business, call somebody that's 40, 50 minutes away from you and ask them how much a 17 inch front wheel drive will cost on the phone. They will have to hang up, make a phone call. That could be 15 minutes of your time, right? If you know those price points, not only is your customer gonna realize you know what you're talking about, that makes them feel comfortable. So next thing we're gonna have to get into now that you know price points are fitness, right? Which is kind of dangerous and scary for a lot of people, but don't worry, by the end of this video, you're gonna be a black belt in fitness. All right, so let's get into the hard part or what everybody thinks is the hard part about selling wheel. After we cruise this site, it'll be really easy. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is head to bigwheels.net. I'll have that listed in the description below. Yeah, it's spelled just like it sounds, B-I-G-W-H-E-E-L-S dot net. And then once we have that pulled up, here's what the home screen looks like. Here it says home, why us, wheels, tires, accessories, all that good stuff. What we're gonna do is click on wheel when we get to the main site and and boom, once we have it here, let's just do an example. Um, that customer that we were talking about, that uh, fictional customer we were talking about earlier, comes into your shop, you pitch him, he says how much. Let's say this customer has a 2017 Kia Optima, because we already brought that up. So let's just go to the year, click on make, let's go to Kia, and let's go to Optima. Let's say it's a base model Optima. So when we first click on the site, it might look confusing, like there's a lot going on. Uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is right above where it says choose wheel filters, we're gonna click that show hide button. That's gonna give us all the goods, all the information that we're gonna need to confidently order wheels. So it gives you the bolt pattern. Bolt patterns are what scare everybody, but now that you have this resource, you can see how easy bolt patterns are. This is five on one fourteen point three, and uh, you can also call it five, four and a half. If you're ordering wheels and you're talking to your wheel rep, most of the time we're gonna leave off the point. It's not really relevant information because there isn't a, like a five on one fourteen point six. Uh, so let's get over the offset range. I'm gonna do a video on offsets, but for just now to get you to actually start selling wheels, you only need to know is if the wheel has an offset between 38 and 48, the one that you're ordering. That means that it'll fit, you're in the offset range. There is a little bit of wiggle room there, but since you're new, as long as it's close to 38 to 48, you're good. A 10 millimeter difference outside of any of these things, so if it says 
you know, 58 and this has 28, you might want to be a little skeptical of putting that wheel on the car. So that's your offset. So as long as the wheel that you're ordering is in between 38 and 48, it'll fit. And as long as it has a five, four and a half bolt pattern, it'll fit. It says OEM tire size. Sorry, just a good resource if uh, you want to be quick with your customer and save some of their time. Hub diameter. Your hub diameter is going to be the actual hub size of the car. In wheels, you'll notice there's a hole right directly in the center of an aftermarket wheel pretty much all wheels right and that whole size fits on the hub so a wheel has a center bore circle that's what the hole on a wheel is called it's called your center bore and then here the wheel center bore should always be larger than the car hub bore next this is a really good one 1215 lug nuts very common 1215 is the most common lug nut for front wheel drive cars and now 1415 for trucks but let's just keep it to this kia optima 1215 lug nuts you had a car out in the shop and one of your text strips or uh, cross threads a lug nut whatever you can order in 1215 lug nuts or you'll know exactly what lug nut that car takes to get it replaced this even says lug type it's a lug nut um, your german cars have that lug bolt so if it says lug bolt in this area it's going to take the bolt it'll let you know if it says lug nut it takes the good old-fashioned usa lug nut so this tells you all the information that we would need to order a 17 inch wheel from your wheel vendor so the way this would normally play out is you would call your wheel vendor introduce yourself and say hey i've got a 17 kia optima what do you have in stock 17 inch five four and a half bolt pattern real quick just to wrap up offsets on this video offset ranges 0 to 15 is considered a low offset, 0 to 15. Above 15 to about 25 would be considered a mid offset. 25 and up is going to be considered your high offset. So here you could mention something like, hey, I need something five, four and a half, high offset. But like I said previously in the video, you should have an idea of the wheels you should be showing your customer to hit that price point. Meaning you called your vendor ahead of time months ago, a few weeks ago, and you already have three wheels that you kind of want to pitch your customer. You're just calling to see if they have it in stock. So normally how the call would go is, hey, what do you have 17 inch, five, four and a half, high offset for this Kia Optima. You would mention the three wheels that you had that price point on already. So that's just basically fitments broken down. You can do this for any car, but I'm gonna show you some quick things that I also use this for. One is for upsizing. Upsizing means say a car comes with a factory 16 inch wheels and your customer now wants to jump up to a 20 inch wheel and a 20 inch tire have to put a 20 inch wheel on a 20 inch tire the way you would want to figure out what size you would want to use tire wise pretty easy here you just want to go to where it says choose wheel filters right below that gray bar scroll over and we go to wheel size and let's click 20s and then click update wheel filters. Of course, that show high disappeared, but you're just gonna scroll down and this is gonna give you some tire sizing right here. And this tire sizing, 215, 35, 20, you can use those. You can also use a 225, 35, 20. So already you are a master at fitments. Your customer calls within a few seconds, a minute or so, you can know what size tires they would need on their vehicle. It just makes your job a lot easier and it takes up less of your time and your customer's time. And one other thing I wanna show you here where it says choose tire filters. This little box where it says best match, that's telling you what the best match is. Um, but you can also use, if you click the drop down box where it says best match, click where it says higher profile and then click update tire filters. Once we go down here and scroll down, you notice it says you can use a 235, 35, 20. That's still within factory spec. It's not gonna throw the speedometer off or anything like that, but keep scrolling down and see if there's just any other option. So it looks like a 235, 35 will be your safe bet for this 17 Kia Optima. You now know how to find a quick fitment on upsizing, tire sizing, all that good stuff, right? So now it's not so intimidating, so let's get into something a little bit more difficult. Let's do something exotic. Let's go to a 2020 and let's do a Maserati and let's do a Gran Turismo. Okay, so the first thing we notice at the OE tire size, the rear and front are different tire sizing. 
when it's more narrow up front, a 245-35 versus a 285-35. The 285 is wider, the 245 the front is narrow. That's called a staggered fitment. That just means that the rear wheels are right, wider and the front wheels are narrower. It just helps out with performance and handling. So let's click on show hide and see if this is any different than that Kia Optima. Uh, it has a five, four and a half bolt pattern. So the bolt pattern on that's pretty common. Five, four and a half is gonna be your most common front wheel drive offset for Asian cars as well. So pretty much Toyota, Lexus, Kia, Hyundai. If it's Asian, it's probably five, four and a half if it has five lug mounts. And it takes a 35 to 55 mil offset. Notice where it says uh, thread pitch. Cool, 916 thread pitch, which is a little, same thing on a Dodge truck, really 916 or old Ford. But it does take a lug bolt. So that's a little different than most cars. So it's got a little bit of that German engineering behind it where it uses a lug bolt instead of a lug nut. At least you know now this Maserati takes a 916 lug bolt. Those lug bolts would be in a 916, a little bit hard to find, but not impossible. Just goes to show you that there's not too much different from this Maserati when it comes to wheels and tires than a Kia Optima. Uh, the performance of the car, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a big difference. But when it comes to actually your job to put wheels and tires on, it's the same game. Uh, let's do one other example here. A Ford and let's do a Mustang, right? Those are pretty common. We'll just do something simple. Cool, we know the OE tire size already is a 225, 55, 16. Let's click on the show hide button and let's figure out the bolt pattern and offset. I have a five, four and a half bolt pattern. Like I said, it's a very common bolt pattern. Um, and the offset ranges is in between 10 and 30. That's a little weird because it's at the high offset and uh, it's also saying here that it has a 10, which Marlon told me it's a low offset. What this is telling you, yes, you can do a 30 mil offset on this Mustang. It sits way under the car. And a lot of people have probably noticed Mustangs where the, the wheels are tucked way under the fender and it looks a little goofy. That's because they use a 30 mil offset. Yes, it works, it bolts up. You can actually drive the car the wheels just tuck way under. And then we've probably also seen some cats in an 04 Mustang where it looks like the wheel doesn't look wide, but it's sticking out. That would be that weird zero to five, 10 mil offset. What you would wanna use on this bad boy is something in between those numbers, like a 20 would be perfect, a 15 would also work out, and also a 25. But it's just going to tell you that a 10 would work on there without rubbing, without any cutting, and then a 30 would also work on there. The wheel range on here, I forgot to mention this earlier, but this is your wheel range. This just tells you that the smallest wheel to the biggest wheel you can do. These aren't exact sciences, this isn't absolute. Nothing is absolute when it comes to working on cars. <laughs> you, <laughs> But what it's telling you is that this is a safe bet. This is in your wheelhouse 20 by nine all day. And let's say this cat wants to do something difficult and make your life a living hell, right? Well, let's say he wants a staggered fitment in 17s. So, oh my God, he wants a 17 by seven up front. And let's say he wants a 17.8 or a 17.9 in the rear. How did we figure that out really quick? Let's click here under where it says choose wheel fil filters and let's go staggered width. So he wants the same size wheels, wider in the rear and more narrow in the back. So we click 17 and staggered width because the actual width of the wheel is the only thing that we want to stagger. Let's click update wheel filters and then let's scroll down to see what the goods are. Cool. So we can do a 17.7 and notice that's a positive 18 mil offset and you look at the wheel and this has a 17 mil offset. And both those offsets are, like I said, in sort of in that middle range in between that 10 and 30. Perfect, that's kind of where we wanna be. Um, and then the tire size that, that recommends, and this, any Mustang guy would tell you, 225, 50, 17, and a 245, 45, 17 in the rear, look perfect. You've probably seen this on Mustangs all the time and didn't understand how cool it was to find this information. Um, but you can look at the offsets here, 25, yeah, that's a little high up front, 23 in the rear, not bad. And same thing here, 27, 27, a little high, it works. It'll probably you know sit a little bit under the fender on those 04 Mustangs. You kind of, I think a 20 mil looks perfect, but you know, in the eye of the beholder. 
Uh, great, so pretty much fitments for cars are now easy. Trucks, you would do the exact same thing. I'm gonna make a video on lifted applications as well. It's just as simple, but it's just a different website. So this is one thing I actually wanted to show you that I stumbled upon while I was making the video. A customer comes in, and this is one of the debunked parts of the video where people say the internet's killing me, the internet's killing me, I can't compete. Most of the time when a customer hands you an advertised price, they make you look at the cell phone, right? I'm gonna go, here's how much I can get this wheel for. You call your vendor and it's well overpriced, right? And you're like, my vendor is selling things a lot cheaper than what I can even buy them for. A lot of times that's not the case, be straight up with you. Now that you know a little bit about fitments and you know that five, four and a half is a very common bull pattern, five on 114.3, five on 114, however you wanna say it, very common bull pattern. So a customer comes in and says, hey, can you get me this 17 inch wheel, right? And this is all I did. I clicked 17 inch wheels and I saw that tire rack was selling some 17 inch wheels at $84. And this is the link I clicked on and bop, cool. It's a sport edition A10 II. Um, and it's a 17 by eight. Very nice, 17 by eight. If you can get a 17 by eight on your car, I would always suggest doing a 17 eight over like a 17 seven or a 17 seven and a half. I just think that eight inch wide on a front wheel drive car looks amazing. Uh, all right, so it's got a 28 mil offset. We've already established that most front wheel drive cars are gonna be between that 30 and up offset. So this 28 mil offset already red flag. It's a 17 inch wheel, and we know that 17 inch is most common for front wheel drive cars and they're selling it at $84. But we already know we have a slightly odd offset for a front wheel drive car, so let's just do a little bit more investigating and let's find out the bull pattern. Well, the bull pattern's five by 112. Five by 112's pretty much gonna be your German stuff. Your Mercedes and Volkswagen and Audi, they, they use those bull patterns. The only problem is a lot of them are high offset. So this wheel is gonna be very hard to sell. So the manufacturer has it blown out blowout pricing. They want to get rid of it. It's not selling and they're willing to just give it away to get it off their floor. So your customer comes to you and says, hey, can you get me this wheel for $84? He just typed in 17 inch wheels. Just like I said on this Google search, all I typed in was 17 inch rim and this $84 came up and that's what your customer is going to do. They're not going to worry about bull patterns. But once you explain to them, well, your bull pattern is five, four and a half, so this wheel isn't going to work. And even if we wanted to, the offset's wrong as well. So it's not going to fit the right offset and it's not going to fit the right bull pattern. You're wrong twice, my man. The exact same wheel now, just in a more common bull pattern, something a little bit more popular. So let's click here and it's the Sport Edition A10 II, gloss black painted, right? The exact same wheel. This one is $178. And it's a 17 by seven. You're getting less wheel and it's costing you more money. Why? 45 mil offset. Perfect for a front wheel drive car. Let's scroll down to the bull pattern. Five on 108. A little bit more common than that five on 112, depending on what part of the country you are. Five on 108 is gonna be mostly your Ford stuff. But five on 108, 17 inch, high offset, you can sell that wheel. It's an easy sell. Ford Fusions, exactly. Ford Taurus, exactly. That's an easy sell for somebody. You should be able to order this wheel and make money from your wheel vendor if they're selling to the public at 178 bucks. Your vendor is not your enemy. The internet is actually your friend in this situation because you should be able to get this wheel cheaper than 178 bucks. Nine times out of 10, that really smoking deal is a wheel that fits five cars, man. <laughs> That's just how it breaks down. So that's another reason why you can use knowing fitments to make you money. Because here's how. If I wanted to make a little bit of cash with no money at all of my own, of my businesses, what I would do is call this vendor that makes this wheel. And I will say, I know you guys have these on special. What price are you gonna give me? Then I would copy and paste this picture to my social media and say, hey, I have a five on 112, 28 mil offset for sale and then you pick the price you wanna sell it at, right? Somebody's gonna reach out to you on social media and say, hey, I've got this particular car. I've got a buddy that has this particular car. Call your wheel vendor and say, hey, can you guys still got them? They're gonna say yes because nobody's selling 17 by eight, five on 112. So there you've taken one of your customers bringing you a very low ball price 
on an oddball wheel. You explain to him why that deal's not gonna happen for him, he might be upset. But you will also explain to him you can get him something just that looks maybe similar to that for a better price. So already you've just gained a customer and now you have a lead on a blowout set of wheels you can make 60, 70% margin on. That's, that's a good deal. So you got a customer and potentially a second customer was spending no money at all. But fitments, now that you understand they're not that scary, you can find what bolt patterns you're looking for. You can also find lug sizes. Let's do something weird. Tesla owners, you guys are cool and all, but just please take it easy. It's a Tesla. Let's do a Tesla Model 3 staggered, right? And let's see what's going on with that. So of course it does come staggered because that's what we have in the description, right? Some of those come factory staggered. Let's click the show hide button and see if this is any different from anything else that we've seen today. Oh my gosh, it's five, four and a half, high offset, 35 to 45 mil offset. Very, very common. So doing a Tesla, no different than doing a Kia Optima, which is no different than doing a Maserati. Once you understand the information that you need to find, and then you have the vendors to call to get the product, it's that easy. As you can see, doing a high-end car, the basics don't change. It's like sports. If you're a basketball player and you can't bounce pass, you're probably not gonna make the varsity team, right? If you can't lay up, you're probably not gonna make the varsity team. Crossing over, yeah, everybody likes to cross over, but it's not a requirement, right? And same thing here, but the money's made on the simple stuff. Every single one of my major players when it comes to wheels, a lot of their day-to-day it's not what you see on Instagram. It's a 20 inch wheel on a charger. It's a 17 inch wheel on a Kia Optima. All of those things add up to when that guy does come in with the, the big purchase, you have your vendors intact. They've already liked you. They like working with you. You're easy to deal with. They're willing to give you cuts and prices because they know you're gonna get the sale done. I get a lot of calls from just the retail public asking, can they buy wheels from me? Of course, I have to say no but I do get those calls a lot and I refer them to shops that I know can get the sale done. So just by having some of this information, you're gonna steer more sales your way. So fitment shouldn't be that scary. You can see a Tesla, not that different from a Kia Optima and which is not that different from a Honda Accord, which is not that different from the Maserati, right? So fitment shouldn't be scary for you anymore now that you have a good resource on where to find this information at and make sure it's accurate. This isn't the end all be all. There are better resources out there, but there you should have confidence in calling a wheel vendor and asking for what you need and you'll know it's right. Was it really that bad? No, fitment's pretty easy. Now that you have a black belt in fitments and you know pretty much everything you know to slap wheels on cars, we wanna talk about getting the free advertising. All right, so we have a lot of great information in this video, pretty much the ins and outs, but before we wrap everything up, we put the wheels on, it's on. We're going to need just a few things here. The first thing I want you to do is if your supplier, your vendor for the wheels, tells you that the wheels will be there on Tuesday, schedule your customer for Wednesday. If they say the wheels will be there on Thursday, schedule your customer for Friday. Give yourself a day bumper. So if there's any issues, your customer isn't driving to the shop. If you've worked in the automotive business, you know what this means. Somebody pulls up, the parts aren't there. Now someone's upset that you've wasted their time. So to prevent that from happening, just schedule your customer a day after your supplier says the wheels are gonna show up. Worst case scenario is the wheels show up on time and you have some fitment in your schedule. You can call your customer and say, hey, we actually got your wheels in a day early. So that way you're a hero on both accounts. You got your customer taken care of the day you told them they would, or or you've got your customer taken care of a day earlier than you told them. Either way, it's a win for you. The next thing we want to get done, just check the bolt pattern, check the offset of the wheel, check the finish. So just go over what your customer ordered and what you received all match. The next thing we're going to do is get the free advertising, right? Is that you should create a social media account for your business. And right before you take the money, because if you do it afterwards, there's that lag, there's no sense of urgency. But if you do it before you take money, it it just normally works out a lot better because it's fresh on your customer's mind and they also would like to save a little bit of money. So here's how you bring it up. You can say, hey, would you like to save 5% on your purchase? And of course, everyone's gonna say 5%. I would love to save the money for sure. But you wanna say is, hey, not a problem. Just add us on Instagram or Facebook and then have them, once the wheels are on the car, snap a picture with their phone and then have them tag your shop. So this will say, hey, I was at XYZ shop, I just got some new wheels, 
And of course, everybody is happy to do this. And then all of your customers, their associates, friends, family, they all know, hey, I stopped at Bob's Tie. Wherever the, your name of the shop is, all of their friends and family and associates will know they were at your shop. And you'll also let them know that you do aftermarket wheels and you also have great deals on tires. So the two sort of wash each other's hands. Your customer's happy. The new wheels, they also say 5% but you just got free advertising. Okay, to sum everything up, let's just go over everything that we've learned and we'll sum it all up real quick. We've figured out who I am, what my background is. We also understand why I think you should be selling wheels at your wheel shop. And then you have free resources and information out there on the net, on the information super highway to actually get you what you need when your customer needs it. We also understand how to qualify customers pretty much. And this should take about three to six months of you qualifying customers before people are just coming into your shop requesting wheels. I've built a lot of business this way and it's just straight up grassroots. There's no hidden uh, magic formula. There's no you know snake oil. It's pretty simple once you start doing it. So if any of this was helpful or that you've agreed with anything that I've said in the video or that you've used some of these techniques before, please like and subscribe. If you've sold a set of wheels recently, leave a comment down below of what they were and the year making model that you put them on. Honestly, hope this information was helpful. And if it was, like I said, please like and subscribe. There'll be more videos coming out. Until then, I'm Marlon Kay. This is Wheel University. Keep them spinning. Thanks.